not copying. One, I suggested it. And two, mine's going to be better than his. That's the whole point. Okay? Big ups to Leah for supporting us this month. You can find out how at the end of the video. Fucking Final Fantasy tier list. So a little bit of history about me and Final Fantasy and where my bias is going to sit. Okay, so eight was the first Final Fantasy I played. I remember sitting at my fucking mate's house, fucking Dano Robinson back in Tamworth, fucking hanging out, and he was just sitting there playing this game that looked excellent. Because, like, my frame of reference at the time was, like, um, like, fucking Crash Bandicoot and Ape Escape. Okay. That's what we're going to listen to at the back. We're going to listen to Ape Escape music. Because holy shit, did Ape Escape have the fucking music? Oof. All right, so... And I remember this game just looked fucking excellent. He'd gone to like the... Because you go out of... Out of like the Blam school. Right? And... You go out and around and you go to like... The first thing that you do is... You go get Ifrit, right? Because Ifrit's in a cave. And I remember just seeing like the first time fucking Ifrit came out of the sky. Like crashing down. And just obliterating everything around them. And it was like mind-blowing to me. Fucking... I'll see if I can... Ifrit, summon, FF8. Why is it? And this is like early 90s. And the fucking sound design. Afrit? No, I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. No. This fucking motherfucker, dude! He, like, king hits a meteor into the ground! Holy shit! So good! Wait, is it just replaying it? Yeah, it is. Okay, sick. Like... So this was fucking wild! Wait, when would you ever drop kick someone in a fight? Um, if I, it's like that one dude who, if you ever saw the the video of that guy, wait, there is one instance here. Um, where is it? I think it's here. Drop kick fight. I know the one I'm looking for. It's like a dude that um, there's like three dudes fighting on the street, um, and they pick it on one guy, and the other guy just fucking sprints in and like a missile. It's insane. But yeah, so... I'm just going to put my bias forward. FF8 was the first one and I fell in love with it. Bang. Right? The, the characters to me are just like... Great. Like, I really like Squall. I don't know. Like, outside of like... Maybe this is going to be biased as well. Because I like... My fucking teens, I was like a massive, like, stereotypical emo dude. Most people who know the lore have seen my, like... Me with, like, my old hair and the piercings and stuff. And, um... Fucking... Squall is, like, dead-ass cool. Especially to, like, a fucking 15-year-old dude. Like, the dude had a sword with a fucking gun in it. All right? He's got the cool factor... But he's also, like, an emotionally fleshed out person, you know? Fucking, he's got a little bit of toxic masculinity. He gets in his way sometimes. He makes silly decisions. He's really into this girl. He doesn't know how to flesh it out. It's awkward. Like, they're two fucking people that have, like, feelings for each other that can't express them properly. And it's like watching them grow closer over time was like actually watching, like, two fucking normal human beings. Especially this was something you just didn't get. Maybe at the time, I don't remember anything like it. Like where you just saw like two people sort of like growing closer and really like developing, right? In terms of their personal relationship with each other. Um, I can't remember his fucking name, but the 
Yeah, we're doing. So we're, I'm yoinking content here, right? I ain't afraid to say it. The yoinking twist is, as Ludwig would say. Um, like the. I. I but yeah, like Renoa, man. Just like. And I, I understand why, right? Eight is underrated. Eight is very underrated. Thank you. It holds Horace behind your worst imaginations. <laughs> a lot of people shit on eight. I feel like because people, this was my first contact, right? And I went back to seven way later, funnily enough. I feel like seven is, <laughs> trying to make people mad. Seven is highly overrated. It's still very, very good, but it's highly overrated. And I think it's because of the same reason that I'm ranking eight so high is because, um, what was I going to say? Um, is because it was like my first game. So my first like real contact with like a kind of Final Fantasy target, right? So you're going to sort of like put that against other titles in like a way that you remember it best. But I've gone back and I've replayed this like three or four times as an adult and I still feel like it holds up. Like it didn't hold up to my first impression of it and my idea of these characters sometimes, but like, I feel like it holds up really well. I feel like it's very strongly underrated. That's why I'm putting it in ST, okay? It was very fun. The gameplay was fun. The gameplay loop was pretty cool. I know a lot of people didn't like the draw mechanic and I understand why. I wish you didn't have to like pull constantly. I wish it was one of those things that you just did once, right? Like you pull it out and you're like, oh, I can steal this monster's ability. And then you just have it. And that would be cool. And you don't have to like fucking redraw every time you have a fire. And it didn't, there were like problems where it disincentivized you to use it. So you draw. So what would happen with people who haven't played it, right? Is you had this mechanic called drawing right? Where you, yeah, <laughs> that's true. So what drawing did was you had like your attack, you had draw and you had like magic and stuff, right? And draw was like, you could go to the, the monster and pull their magic out of them, right? And then you'd use that magic and that's cool in concept. It's like, oh, I'm able to use the weapon, the enemy's power against him. And I can, I see a new enemy. That's a new reason for me to explore and go and like pull stuff out, you know, and find new things that like encourages um, exploration. It encourages fighting and looking for new enemies, which is what, what a good RPG wants you to do, right? It creates mechanical reasons for you to go around and do shit, to engage with the world because some people don't want to generally, like, do it. Like, it, you, first you have to have a world that's interesting enough, which I think FF8 is, right? Um, but also forcing you to engage with it in, in a certain way as well can, like, really draw you in. So the drawing mechanic really did that successfully. The problem with it is, is you could assign those drawn magics to stats, right? And every time you drew, you drew one copy of that magic, Right? So you draw a Fyraga and you've got like one Fyraga and once you cast it, you lose a Fyraga, right? Now, what would happen is, is you'd assign those to stats. So Fyraga was really good for say strength. So you might pop Fyraga on your attack draw, right? And now every time you use that Fyraga, you might be in a situation where you want to use that element matchup, right? It would actually lower the stat down because the more you had of a thing, the more the stat went up. So it created like a perverse incentive, which is where I think the system sort of fails. I wish you didn't have to do that. Um, it, it actually felt bad to use spells, which was, but I guess on the other hand, right? So like, here's the, here's the other side of that defense. Is it also encouraged you to use your summons? Because you could use your summons in place of those spells, right? Because the summons had the elemental power. And so you, you had to use your summons. You had to go out. It wasn't like a, a valuable resource. Summons take a year to do, right? That's the downside. It's, it's sort of like the ideas are there. I understand where the developers were sort of coming from when they had the idea like, hey, yeah, well, it'll prevent them from using magic and magic's really powerful, but it also, you have summons, but the summons are a pain in the ass, right? But having like new things and, and, and using those cool new things is cool, right? Like the, the first time you go out of your way to get Doom Train and that you use Doom Train is like hype as fuck. Because you had to like really work for it. 
So I I really liked the system. It had problems, right? Uh, it, it, if I ignored the problems, I wouldn't be putting anything in ST. But I really like it. I think as an overall thing, it works really well in, in, in conjunction with each other. The systems were really fun and cool. Um, it incentivized the right things and disincentivized the couple of the wrong things, but it worked not too badly in my opinion, right? The whole like... And it actively kept you engaged with the with the turn-based ge gameplay, right? So it had like the same like TAB system as um, as FF7 did, but every time you use Squall, right? I don't remember. I don't remember if you had to have Squall in the party. I think you did. Um, you'd press a button to fire the gun as you swing the blade, right? Um, and so you'd still be sort of like really focused in on your like actual combat because a lot of people's weapons had stuff like that. So in terms of gameplay, for a turn-based gameplay, it was really fucking engaging. I feel like sometimes there were, there were other ways of doing it. One second, I've actually got to, I just remembered I've got to do the thing. Wasn't it just Squall and Cypher? I feel like, I feel like I remember Quinoa having a, a thing that did it as well. I feel like, and selfie. I could be wrong. Um, one second, I just gotta quickly... I just realized I didn't actually send that tweet. This fucking music is a bop, though. This is sending me on. I'm sending myself on such a nostalgia trip right now. I'll send a quick. I'll get a quick screenshot of this. Paint. Just need to quickly crop it. So I think I've given a pretty good comprehensive reason as to why FF8 is the best one. But if I need to do it further, right, the story was interesting. It really sort of like pulled you around. It gave like a whole bunch of like twists and turns. There were like real points in the story at which you were, you really had to reassess what was going on, right? The end, confusing. It didn't stick the landing in my opinion, but... If we look at like the like I think like Supreme mentioned Ah oh, true, I'm a dumb fuck. Um So the first time like you remember I remember Belam Garden was like in this massive situation and the feeling is that you're sort of cornered and look like it could be all over, and then all of a sudden they fucking fly the goddamn building out of the ground. And they'd been building up to it, and you could see all the points of it, right? Because of the way that they'd had the building, they sort of, like, foreshadowed it a little bit. And all of a sudden, fuck me, dude. Holy shit. This tier list was just an excuse for me to gush about Final Fantasy VIII, by the way. Balamb. Garden. Fly. Oh yeah, they were flying fucking rockets at it! Yes, the landing wasn't always a moment too. Five title.
And this is in fucking 480. Shit! cool was that how fucking cool was that and then you use that to like explore the overworld and it just opens up the game and exploring the overworld is like genuinely fun everything there is so fucking cool and the cutscenes in the gameplay true the way that it like moved in between the two like mm. oh i'm such a big fan all right enough i feel like i'm going over eight too much but I just want to put across how genuine I know that I understand that I'm crowded by nostalgia, all right? But I feel like I've made a good argument outside of nostalgia as to why. Now, that being said, you know what? I'll cop to some of the fucking criticisms that we could put on, all right? Some of the side characters, very not fleshed out. Okay? Fucking Irving the sniper dude had all the fucking potential in the world to be an incredibly good and interesting character and they don't really do much with him except kind of make him interested in selfie um like quinoa has this interesting dynamic at the start and then he sort of falls off zell's kind of cool right but it feels like a lot of those characters grow over time as well like i don't i don't know um but I I like Final Fantasy VIII a lot. I'm a very big fan of it. So we fucking S tier and baby. I'm going to sort of leave 11 and 14. Um, mostly because they're MMOs. We're just going to leave them off the list. Okay. I'm going to be real with you. Final Fantasy 15. Does anyone remember the first trailer for this? Does anyone know where this... Does anyone remember the, the trailer... I think it was in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, here it is. Because it's back when it was versus, versus 13, yeah. This was so... This is back in an era where people were like, kind of meh on the turn-based gameplay. Like, and Kingdom Hearts had just come out and everyone was like why don't they do this for final fantasy I think it's cool that they set this in like the same universe as 13. And it 
was like the blood and it was edgy. Yeah, the fabulous over crystals, yeah. What a cool trailer! It says everything about the gameplay like right away, right? Um, FF versus 13 gameplay. 10 years ago. And then this trailer came out after that. And everyone had already been pretty hyped on this. Like, keep in mind, they'd been making 15 for nearly 15 years. <laughs> I think it was 10 years after their announcement they released it. I remember seeing this and thinking, holy shit. Jumping between like actual gameplay so seamlessly. Like by the time this came out, this wasn't that big of a, an achievement, but before this it was like, Holy shit. And seeing actual combat, like actual button pressing combat in a fucking mainline Final Fantasy title. Looking at it now, it looks kind of like weightless. Like it doesn't feel like... Obviously, you can't tell by pressing it, but it doesn't feel like it has like a lot of weight behind it. Which I, f playing 15, that was like one of my main feelings and criticisms when I first like sort of played the trailer. I remember they released the fucking gameplay trailer, the one where you played around that one area in the, in the PlayStation and everyone was like super hyped for it. And after playing Dark Souls, where like every swing feels weighty and hitting something feels like you're fucking thunking it, you know? Like, this was like airy fairy fly around like hit things and like even going back to kingdom hearts now it's like oh yeah it just it doesn't have the same feeling and i so i don't know and this feels this even feels a bit like airier than like kingdom hearts it's too flighty in terms of like i feel like if you came after dark souls you had to have very weighty combat like the big appeal of, of, of the From Software series is that they make everything just feel good, right? Even if you're not using like a big heavy sword, say you're using like in Bloodborne, the fucking, the cane whip, when you hit with the whip, it's like, it feels, it, it just feels good to use a thunk, thunk, you know? Like everything like has a heft to it. Everything has, yeah. Yeah, Monster Hunter does feel like that. But with this, it's like, <laughs> This still looks really good for like, I think this is like a PS2 era trailer. The ending product ended up looking so much better though. Holy fuck, this was a beautiful game to play. Early PS3, okay.
have decent to work to it when I first played it. Not as much weight as Dark Souls, but combat didn't feel weightless. I don't know, maybe it was because I'd just come off playing like From Souls games. I was like, eh. Like, I feel like if you have, like, things where you can just, like, throw swords and they have, like, heft to them and you've got, like, thunk and you can... I get, like, teleporting and, and jumping is going to feel a little bit light, but, like, I, I feel like it could have had more impact. This was sick. A bit dark, though, like, the colors are a bit muted. I, yeah, I really like, like, the trailer and the hype was all there, and it all sort of, like, carried through. I remember I was, like, incredibly fucking excited for this. Um, the, how it felt when it actually came out. I haven't completed this. I've gotten about halfway to two-thirds of the way through it, okay? This is going to be the case of most of these games because I just don't have a great attention span. <laughs> so if the ending saves it, let me know. But in terms of what I remember, right, the combat is okay. I feel like the combat that it's going for is done better by Kingdom Hearts, um, which is, funnily enough, a game that they made. Um, I really like the characters and their relationships. Like, it very much gives you a feeling of going on a road trip with the boys. Like, hanging out and making jokes at each other and really warm and cozy and, and the whole camping thing. I feel like they did a really good job of creating that atmosphere of hanging out with the boys. You know? Like, yeah, let's go for a fucking drive and let's go up to, we'll go, as, as, <laughs> we'll go up north, we'll go to the fucking camp, we'll go out to the dam, we'll set up the camp and we'll get a fucking bag of marshmallows, maybe grill some shit and have like a good, good hot summer's night, you know? And that, it really captures that feeling well, I think. It's very pretty, but for me, this story was really lackluster. The main characters in it is like the princess and all this. Like I didn't, I didn't really care for it. I wasn't following it much at all. Um, the world was at least cool and interesting. I really like this, like the driving around and this like semi modern area. Like the feeling and the vibe was there. I don't think the execution was great. I feel like it was like, funnily enough, for a game that took them ten years to make, in places it just felt really unpolished. Um, so there are things I like about it and things I dislike about it. I don't think it was bad. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my time with it. So I'm going to pop it in C. All right. We're looking at this like you're, you're like your school grades. Like we're, this is like HD, a distinction, a credit, a pass and a fail. Okay. That's how we're looking at this tip. Wait, I'm going to do it right now. HD. D. C, P, and F. Okay. Yeah, I feel like the story could have been so much better. I feel like they got like there, halfway there, right? That's a game that could have benefited from, and it's it's interesting that they go back and they like retroactively rework the story and change things and add things. It's funny. It's interesting to do that in like a post patch era. Um, I didn't thought you didn't believe in grading. I don't like grading. Okay. Um, but we're using we're using grading shorthand here. So Final Fantasy XV gets the gets the past here. It was in terms of Final Fantasy games a game that passed. That's fine. All right. Final Fantasy VI is the best. I am H O. Let's go to that one. Where are we? Um, it's four six here. Okay. It's been a while since I've played six. I remember I got six on accident. So who here remembers fucking video is your blockbuster? Hands hands up in the chat. Oh wait, I gotta put the music back on. Get the vibes going, the fucking the ape escape vibes.
I should. Okay, you know what? That's fair. We used to hire at the mum. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yep. Okay, sick. Good. Because I remember. Remember how I said at the start of this list, I was like, fuck, I remember sitting there playing Final. watching my friend play Final Fantasy VIII and losing my goddamn fucking mind? I wanted to play it myself. And I went to rent it out the next week and I'm like, it's that one. It's that one. Right? I remember this was the week that, like, um. That. I think it was, there was, it was like, I got, I got a couple of rentals because it was like five rentals for four bucks or some shit, right? I got Final Fantasy, what I thought was Final Fantasy 8. I got like Lemmings and some other shit. And Lemmings was boring as fuck and all the other games sucked. And I remember putting in, coming home, and I lived in like this double brick basement. It was huge. Um, it was just like a brick room that was like fucking five meters tall. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I just felt like it was because I was like fucking 10. But, um, and, and, and getting down on the, on the floor and sitting down, I had like a little fucking TV unit in the corner, like, like this big with a little fucking CRT TV. It was like 10 inches or some shit. It wasn't big. Um, and cracking open. Oh dude, the, the old PS1, like opening the fucking disc tray, like pressing the button and he goes, Oh, oh, it's, this is sending me back. Um, so, and I put, I, I get the disc out and I put it in. And I boot it up and I'm filled with immense disappointment. I got the wrong one. <laughs> this isn't some excellent looking graphics, some new age shit. This isn't one drew me into Final Fantasy. Look at this fucking pixel blocky shit. What's going on here then? So I was, I was pretty disappointed with my initial hit with uh, Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> <laughs> But going into it, I um, I kept going with it, and I I really enjoyed it. And I've revisited it years later, and I can't get the same like back into itness. So like a lot of my memory of it is going to be from like maybe some playing it today. Um, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know Roman numerals. That's it. <laughs> um. And uh, so like from what I remember, it was very, very turn based, right? And I have like a, I had a proclivity against it and now it's like, okay to me. Um, the characters, the story's interesting and the setting's interesting. That is one thing I will say, but the, um, the, so the, the initial like presentation was like kind of meh for me. Um, the characters are kind of cool. Like, the idea of the characters is cool. I feel like a lot of them don't hit what they could be. And maybe that's because they've taken a lot of the characters that were in 6 and those characters have become tropey. Like, the... Like, more tropey than they were. But from what I remember of 6... It was fun and interesting. It didn't do anything like super different in terms of like mechanics. Um, and the characters and story weren't really enough for it to carry it for me personally. That's just me. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some people mad as well. I'm going to pop it in the, the past here. It was either pass or credit for this one. I'd, I'd feel like it's, I feel like it was just, yeah. Yeah, that's what I found about Kef Kefka's, like, cool and interesting, I guess, now. I feel like the Kesen character trope's been done, like, better. I feel like Hisoka is, like, a way better version of Kefka. And I'm pretty sure Hisoka was around before Kefka. So. Oh. Hmm. I'm gonna go with this. I make some people mad. So that was my experience with Six. It's gonna cloud it. I'm gonna be upfront and frank. But that's my experience with six. Um, all right, let's go to nine. So nine was one I played like way later in life. Um, I had, I'd been, 
I think I, I think I'd played like 12 and finished 12 at the point that I'd played nine and had started 13. Um, and my housemates like, oh, you know, which are your favorite Final Fantasies? And I go, oh, it's probably like eight. And then I'll because I don't want to like ruin any of the rest of this tier list. But he's like, oh, did you ever play nine? I'm like, fuck, I don't think so, eh? So he was like, dude, nine is like my favorite. Like Vivi's so cool and, and yada yada and all these other things. And I took his word for it because he has like general good taste and stuff. He has like a really good understanding of the things that he likes and, and why he likes them. And I like those kind of people because it means that they can give me good, useful stuff that's interesting. Um, so I played, it was back when I'd lived in, I lived in this place called Blinga. It was like this beach hut. It was like this fucking house. It was maybe like this four of this room and that's it. And that includes like the kitchen, the lounge room, and, and our two bedrooms. And the two bedrooms were like, we had, he'd had like a slightly bigger bedroom than mine. His bedroom was like a bedroom and a half of mine. And we shared, there was like a cupboard in the middle between them, right? And the cupboard was shared space. So his, on his, on this side was like his cupboard and on this side was my cupboard. And I could look, look down and we could like hear each other what's going on within each other's rooms. So he used to bring girls back and fucking I could hear what was going on dead ass, right? And he wasn't even particularly loud, but the sound carried through the fucking closets, okay? So it was kind of fucked up. But those are really good memories about that time in my life. That was the first time I'd like moved out of house and he's a really good friend of mine, really cherished friend, probably my best friend in the whole wide world, right? So I really value that time that I spent there and I've got like really good memories of it. And as a part of that, I'm going to pass some of those memories on to Final Fantasy IX, right? Because this is back when I lived in this like shitty fucking 30 year old flat where, you know, I had like my own room and all I did was like work and I'd had like, the rent was really cheap. So I'd had a fuck ton of disposable income. So I spent my money on crap, bought a whole bunch of games, probably didn't need to, didn't save any money, but it was like, it was really good living. Didn't have any like adult responsibilities and... I lived out of home, but it was like just good vibes, you know, that good stage in your life. The first time you move out of home and you're living with friends and the world's your oyster and everything's cheery and the rent's cheap because you've got a fuck ton of people living there. But, you know, it, I have like a lot of like good feelings, right? And I remember booting up nine and, and I feel like there was that, that, that point that like Wicker made me is like it railroads you really hard and it does. I really wanted to get out and explore this world and learn about it because it seemed really interesting when I first started doing it you know um so i wasn't a big fan of being railroaded so hard but the i feel like i liked the characters i feel like everything was like really cool this idea of like this traveling circus and and all these people around you it really felt like community-ish um the characters sort of twisted a little bit the art style was interesting having like four people in like in turn-based combat and all these four people had like really distinct different roles was re was really cool um, and, the, and the way I feel like the experience system did really well and combat was kind of fun. Like combat was really stripped down compared to the last two. Like it went back to a pretty turn-based model with like all these things, but it felt like they'd learnt from it and they'd carried it through. And I just remember having like really good feelings about eight, um, about nine, sorry. I feel like though the characters are cool, like the concepts are interesting. They're very different. Like, I've never had, like, a feeling of anything like 9. Like, nothing feels like it. None of the other Final Fantasy games feel like it. No other game I've played has a setting or characters or anything that really feels like it. It just feels different. It's like, it's like Chrono Trigger. It feels different, you know? So, what I'm going to say is, I feel like it did a lot of stuff interesting. I liked a lot of it. Nothing really was super excellent that, like, come away from that... Um, with like, holy shit, this was, this was, this was very good. So I put it in D, it gets a distinction. This is a well-written essay, you know, it's, it's missing a couple of things. It's missing that little bit of, of stuff that really makes you feel it's great about it, but you know, it's good. Yeah. Final Fantasy one. I played through Final Fa I've, uh, the first three Final Fantasies I owned as mobile games. So that's going to color my experience with it. Final Fantasy 1 was fine. It was solid. It was super... It was, obviously, this is one of those things where we're not going to appreciate it as much in hindsight, where it did something new that a lot of people ended up doing, right? It was important. 
Um, but I feel like the lack of actually having characters and because you just like pick classes, right? And it was you're the you're the hero of the world and and cool. Are we including mobile games in the tier list? The, it was ported to mobile, so the first I think six have been ported to mobile pretty well. Um, and they're like twenty bucks a pop, and it's worth it. It's worth the buy. So like, I think it's I think it does a lot. That's like that sets the foundation that's important right so i liked it that's fine that's one of the things i did on the go so it's okay i'm gonna sort of like two i remember not liking that much anyway and in and, and comparison to one anyway this is just like personal feeling um but it was like eh I like the idea of like walking around and like ranking up your skills. So like it was it was like one of the first introductions of like the more you use a skill, the more it goes up. But it was in in like the way that it did like toughness, like you had to get hit to get your toughness to go up. So if you were just ended up being good at the game, you never like ranked your toughness up and you end up having to sit there and wait to get hit and then you'd rank your toughness up and wait to get hit and rank your toughness up. It was dumb. It didn't cash out the way that they wanted it to, I don't think. Um, and it ended up being, like, frustrating. So, I didn't like it. I like the ideas behind it. I don't think it was executed well. Because a lot of these first, like, three or four are, like, very mechanics-based. I don't think the stories are, like, super interesting. Um... Final Fantasy 4 AF. So, I don't remember much of 4 or 5, I don't think. So I won't, I'll try not to rank ones I haven't played like, and, and had like memories of. Um, fucking 12. So 12 was one I remember I played, this is like one of the last ones I played, I think when I was living with my parents. Um, yeah, it's too, it's too confusing, I can't be asked. I'll be real. All right. Um, 12 is very good. I think. I feel like 12's combat system sort of lets it down. It feels very much like they were getting ready to make an MMO or that it was ported from MMO and that's they saw like MMOs like sort of worked. Um, but the idea of a game that sort of plays itself sounds okay. Especially in the way that like the, the combat was like you had to do all this stuff and then it was really cool once you got the licenses to do like the, the automation of the combat. But at a certain point, it just ended up that you were just like pressing the walking stick to go forward and you watched a game, which wasn't great. I remember like multiple times playing 12, I was like chugging through it to do the cool, chugging through the combat and the gameplay to get to the cool stuff, right? The Gambit stuff was fun to mess around with True. Like once once you got it set right, it was like really it was really satisfying to get a set of Gambits that worked really well together. So Gambits were the um was the system for people who don't know that automated your combat, right? So like it it was it was very WoW meets Kingdom Hearts, basically, right? Where you had like auto attacks that happened um when it was off cooldown. And you do stuff in between like, oh, I need to heal this guy or, oh, I need to use this ability. And eventually you could gambit all that stuff up. You could automate it all, right? Um, and once it was really satisfying to set up gambits for a boss and watch that encounter flesh out and not have to do too much because you'd set your gambits at like the right thresholds. Like it was like, oh, this boss can crit me. I can like heal. I can set my like gambit to heal at 40% instead of 30%, right? And then you avoid a lot of these problems or, it, or you could go like, if this happened, then this happened. You felt like a like a computer program or watching a program like flash out. And that was kind of cool. Um, so, but in the end, it ended up, I remember like sitting, there were times when I was playing the game, I was like, like, and the, the dungeons and shit were grindy, were very fucking grindy. It was cool that you could see the enemies in the world and you could avoid them and walk around them, but holy fuck, dude, they were all so big and everything respawned and you just had to chug through so much shit. And if you got lost and you got lost a lot, it was fucking pain. It feels like you had to get through a lot of crap to get to the good shit. So the combat's like a 50-50 from me. 
Once it was set up, it, it got boring very quickly. But like getting new gambits and new licenses was exciting and advancing was cool. And really getting your characters to where you want was like, yeah, the Crystal Dungeon was a fucking nightmare to navigate true. Um, but getting like, getting your characters to where you wanted them felt satisfying, right? I haven't talked, I'm getting to it. Okay. I just wanted to talk about the gameplay first and then talk about the story. Because the reason you play 12 is for the story. It has such an interesting character set. They're very fucking cool. Right? Um, everything that goes on is intriguing. The world really sucks you in. Right? The whole, like, judge system. You see these fucking cool dudes with, like... Like, it's, it's on the front. You saw this dude with, like, massive fucking armor and swords. And they pass judgment. Just ignore Van's existence. Yeah, exactly. The main character is the worst. It says a lot when the main character is the worst of all the characters. With Van, Van and Penelope just kind of are there and are, are dragged along for the ride and suck. Everyone else is super fucking cool. Everyone else is really cool. Okay? The princess and the knight are interesting. The fucking sky pirate. The sky pirate, like, Fran. The whole, like, lore around Fran and her people and stuff. Holy shit, I remember walking to a fucking jungle village for the first time and these suspension bridges. And, oh, dude, everything about it was so fucking cool. Like, the judge system, the licenses, the hunters going out to, like, serve bounties and catching these, like, super weird and interesting things, following these clues that you bred from these bounties to go and, to go and catch them, you know? Like, is this JRP Star Wars Pepe Love True? Like, the stuff about it is very cool. I really remember fondly, like, the whole story, the the interesting stuff between the characters I like that, like, aren't Van and Penelope. Um, Penelope? Penelope? Wait, FF... Oh, one second. FF12. Who are the characters again? I swear it's Penelope. Van. Ash. Bosh. Bosh is so underrated as a character too. He's so fucking good. Pinello, there we go. This guy is the fucking baller of the series though. Holy shit. What a ball of charisma. What a good looking character design. This should have been the MC, 200%. And I know that there were plans to make him the MC from memory. Oh, let's, let's listen to some of this voice acting. This is very PS2, PS3 era graphics, though. Um... So you have lived. I am Judge Magister. Compression was bad, yeah. Even in disgrace. My just reward for aiding the Empire that destroyed my homeland. Branth, do not blame yourself anymore. Especially for fucking like English voice acting, which notoriously sucks in comparison to Japanese. The English voice actors of this game fucking killed it. You confound me, brother. You failed Landis. You failed Damasca. All you were to protect. Yet you still hold on to your honor. How? I had someone more important and to the defend. fucking music. And defender I have. How is it that you have survived? Is it not because you defend Lord Larsa? Silence! All was stripped from me. Only hatred for the brother who fled our homeland remains mine. Tell me, why do you forsake that which you must hold most precious? Look at this character design. How fucking cool is this as a note? Holy shit. I do as I must, brother. Or is that not answer enough? Like, it's really interesting that the, the telltale thing here Until is... Enough. I do as I must, brother. You have, like, all of the interesting characters here. This is about it. 
<laughs> um, and it's funny that this is like the one of the big like lead up final scenes, and Van Van just isn't here. <laughs> Which is cool because like all of these characters are very good by the end, very well fleshed out. They all grow. They all have really strong arcs from who they are at the start and who they are at the end, except for Varna Pinnell. Um, especially like, oh my gosh. Like going from like being a rebel, being like a coward, like to, to, to really fighting for what he believes in, Ash really growing as like a princess and becoming this like really strong person. Holy shit. This dude growing the fuck up, basically. <laughs> and stopping running away from his problems and being like a child. Fran coming to the terms with like the world around her and, and dealing with people in her life. Whole, it's just so good. And the like, like we already gone over this, but the fucking voice acting is like, hmm. Mm, we've heard it. You heard it here first, folks. We It's right there. So I think Final Fantasy XII is a D. It doesn't stick the landing. Everything about it is good. It's interesting to talk about. More interesting than it is to play. <laughs> um, but the, the side stuff, like, it, it, it sends you off. Like, the bounty system was really cool and well done. It was... It really felt like that, um... That space... Um... The, what do you call it? Space opera vibe. So it was, um, I, I really liked it. I liked it more than I probably should have. Um, where are we? Inside. All right. I don't see the appeal of Final Fantasy. I don't, for me personally, it's like these interesting worlds that are really built well from the ground up. And they're like big sandboxes to go run around in and explore. Sometimes the combat can be okay, but they have like... Final Fantasy just has always interesting ideas. I've never gone away from a Final Fantasy feeling like it was generic or something that's been done before. I always come in and come out with something new, even if it's like an older game. Like I said, I remember going back to 9 and feeling like, holy shit, this was like everything just done really well. So... We stand, I like Final Fantasy XII. A lot of people don't. A lot of people like see the auto battler combat and, and don't really like get too far into it. And it can be really tiring at times and the dungeons are a bit of a grind. And it can really, that can really pull you out of it. Right? Was FF6 called FF3 in Australia? I can't remember. Maybe? Oh. Wait. No, this is... This is four here. It was six. And I put six over one. Now we put six here, to be fair. I was in America. Um, where are we? <laughs> All right. So... Next up on the list, what I'll do is we've got 11 isn't going to be done. I didn't play 12 RW, 3 we're not going to worry about, 13 is going to be an interesting talk, 5, 4 AF, Final Fantasy 14, we won't talk about the onlines, 7, 10, 2 and 10 we'll swap. 13.2 and 13LR. 12RW. Okay, cool. I think that's everything in, in, in order for what's left. So, let's have a look. What do we got now? Final Fantasy 13. What was everyone else's feelings about Final Fantasy 13? Did everyone like... Did we all have a vibe? Never played. Did you? How many of these have you played, Rack? None! Then how are you talking shit? Like, I don't see the appeal. Give it a shot. Give it a run. I'm not a fan despite having one of the better end games in the series. It was okay and the combat was alright. I feel like it suffers... In terms of the combat, I feel like it suffers from, like, what 12 had, but being less interesting. 
right? Because it's still that, like, auto battlery combat, but, like, you just change between, like, team styles? Wait, 13 isn't medieval-looking fantasy. Half of these aren't medieval-looking fantasy. Like... Oh god, one thing I fucking hated about this game was the characters. I literally hated like 90% I fucking hate this cunt. We'll see her again. Lightning's okay. But Snow's a fucking cunt. Holy shit, I hated that character. Hope was worse. Hope is a blight against humanity. We'll finish this. But Snow was like terminally boring. Like, nothing, despite being, like, a resistance leader with, like, fucking, who punches people as, like, in, in a world where people use fucking guns, and this dude just, like, straight up, fucking hands up, let's go, champ, right? How do you, in a resistance leader, how do you make this guy uncharismatic and boring? Oh, God, and this whole fucking Lassie thing, how do you make your world so impenetrable? Oh, the fucking Lassie and the Falsy and the Falsha and the Dongir. Like, what do you? Why did you do this? Enemy of Cocoon. Danger to us all. My parents died. I had to be strong for Sarah, so I thought I needed to forget my. Child. This little cunt. This little cunt can fuck off. I was sick of dragging his little childish ass around for half of this fucking game until he finally gets a pair of fucking cojones into his fucking throat. And even then, he still sucked. Why did this character suck so much? How do you make one character so fucking bad, so irritating, such a drag on your game? Changing my name, I could change who I was. Who are you? I've got a few. This character here was kind of okay. The the voice was kind of irritating. I don't like the voice acting in this game very much. Not at all. But like she was cool in terms of like style and stuff. You screws loose. I thought that by changing my name, I could change who I was. Who are you? I've got a few screws loose. But I'm a Lassie, same as you. You must be Snow. Sid Rains, Brigadier General of the Fleet. Your son's a hero. This guy! The only good character. The only, like, genuinely good, normal character who acts like a normal fucking person throughout this entire game. Holy shit. This guy's actually cool. And he shoots people with guns. And he has fucking chocobos in his hair. Cool guy! We'll erect a memorial in Eden. And put his crystal on display. He's like a family man who actually has like decent motivations, but yeah, this game's fucking voice acting is terrible. They find out you're sheltering with C. Look. And put his crystal. Yeah, that's the kind of hmm part. But all this is like, you're lucky if you get away with like a, a black character that isn't just a giant stereotype. He has like, he has an afro and everything in here like with a fro comb and everything and has guns like yeah it, it's japan you're not going to get a really great portrayal of black people okay it's, it, i'm just glad we got any at all if they find out you're sheltering the sea, listen to this dude's voice this is your home the point is the lightning's little sister was kind of okay but uh, very unmemorable Oh, this voice acting is so bad. The very existence of him seek puts every last one of us in danger. Tell me, do you really think your life is worth more than the lives of millions of cocoon citizens? So this is the foul sea. It's this thing's fault the bird started it. And it's people who are dying. Sarah told us to save cocoon. It has three parts with time travel bullshit. This ordeal alone, you know. That's what scares me. 
Yeah, who was who was really fucking out here clamoring for Final Fantasy 13 Part 3? Who was asking for this? Don't, I don't want to see you get hurt because of me. Let Cocoon get what's coming. Better that than watch a friend. What is this voice acting? Let Cocoon get what's coming. Better that than watch a friend go sick. What happens when your actions end up ruining someone's life? How do you pay for what you've done? Shoot me! Don't you even! You're asking someone to shoot you. Have some fucking emotion. Listen to this. How do you pay for what you've done? Shoot me! Don't you even! Shoot me! And we just came from fucking 12? I am Vash von Rosenberg! Like, Jesus Christ. He's actually, do he, he does a pretty good job though. The, the voice actor for this character. Everything will be sh what you've done. Shoot me. Don't you even. Either you die and everything will be sugar and rainbows. What do you want from me? You saw the fools. A mindless mob drunk on fear of a fuelless sea. Is this the cocoon you dreamed of? My dream is but a Falsy's fancy now. Let's move. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I like how they did the the fucking they saw the gunblade did really well in Final Fantasy 8 like that was the thing that everyone remembered from Final Fantasy 8 so they tried to remake it for this game as well where the, where the gun was also a sword but it's just nowhere near as fucking cool because Squall's gunblade is a fucking revolver with a giant barrel This is not representative of hope, by the way. The hope for like 90% of the fucking game would have seen that giant robot and been like, ah, ah, and run away and fucking scream and cried, and you would have had to chase after him and waste like fucking 40 minutes of your fucking gameplay. They got paid really well. I'm sure as shit they did. Everyone's fucking clamoring to be in these games. We just came from 12, which had like excellent voice acting. Excellent to this shit. This is a, this is a game later. You know what's the worst part is? Twelve underperformed. Thirteen performed so well that they made three fucking games out of it. This was the one that caught on in the West. This fucking game. Like. Holy shit. Here's where I actually rage. 13 is all fucking style and no substance. The characters, for the most part, almost all of them are fucking boring all the way to irritating, right? Like... It irritates me how much potential that this game had and how hard it shit the fucking bed, okay? So, like, lightning is kind of cool and interesting. That's... Yeah, sure. She has like a, a bit of a, a, a style and, and a, everything and it, sure, great, right? But fucking like Snow is somehow the most boring, uncharismatic piece of shit I've ever seen in a fucking Final Fantasy game. How do you take a guy who punches shit and leads a resistance? He has to lead a resistance. How is he so uncharismatic? Fucking hope. You just drag around. You just want them to die. I just, I just wish, I wish if I could take the first act and hope could just fucking die, could just die at the start of the game and 
We never have to see them again. That game would be so much fucking better for it, okay? Because then you're like, oh, a kid's dead. Holy shit, shit's real, right? Fuck it, dude. We, and then we wouldn't have had to deal with dragging that mopey piece of shit around for the whole fucking game, right? Oh. Lightning Sister, just boring, terrible, the little fucking shitty pigtail, doing nothing, all fucking game, right? The South African person is kind of interesting when they show up, the fucking voice acting does nothing, and their character arc goes fucking nowhere. We are throwing Final Fantasy XIII in the F tier, fucking auto-battling piece of shit. How do you take a world that cool? How do you take something so pretty, so well done, so beautiful, right, with really cool and interesting character designs, and shit everything down the toilet, with really uninteresting story, Fucking hard to penetrate bullshit lore with fucking names that don't sound like they make any sense. You take two concepts and give them all those the exact same fucking names. The Falsy and the Lassie. Like, why would you do that? Why? I, just, I don't know why. And people... And we're doing this for... 13 is even worse. 13 2 is even fucking worse, right? Because then you only get two characters. You only get the fucking... The lightning sister, and she was one of the most boring characters, and she become how becomes more boring now. And she gets her time traveling boyfriend, and they go through time, and they solve all the problems together. And guess what the fucking combat system is? Is they get pets, and that's it. You have like your two best friends, and they're fucking beautiful little monster pets, and that's how they get around. How do you take that concept of time traveling pet battler and shit it up? How? It's so bad! 13-3? Guess what? Fuck it, dude. I don't even care. Lightning Returns. I don't care about enough about 13 to care about Lightning Returning. I didn't even play this game, and I'm putting it in the F tier. You know why? Because it shouldn't have been fucking made. Fuck me! Game sucks so hard, holy shit. Alright. Now we've... We've got the bad ones out of the way. Alright? Because, like, 15 is just inoffensive. That's it. You know? It had, like, good... It had actually good and interesting things about it. And we'll watch... We'll watch the laughing scene really quickly because we are going to watch... We are going to do 10 now. May watch. <gasps> the hey. You got pretty good. You sound sad. Yeah, maybe. Want a scream? Even compared to the fucking voice acting from what we just- 13 was the newer game, Yuna's voice acting here is actually pretty good. Titus isn't terrible either. Mm, I really don't think that's gonna help this time. Like, there's actually emotion in Titus's voice. He's fucking bummed out. What? Hmm? It's embarrassing to say this myself, but summoners and their guardians are kind of like Spira's... Right, so Rack, you've never played this game before, right? Just by hearing... Just by hearing Yuna... Yuna? Let me check. Yeah, it was one of the first, like, really well-voiced games. Like, voiced for most of the game. Like, where every, every line was spoken. Um... We are gonna... We are gonna talk about the context of that. Um, where's the characters? Setting characters. Is it? Let's make sure I get a name. Titus, Yuna, not Luna, what am I doing? Yeah, so Rack, you have never played this game, but you've seen this scene, right? We're watching it right now. What do you think? Shut the fuck up, Titan, this is, you're wrong, you're just wrong, all right? All right, Rack, you've never seen this game? Just from seeing these next 20 seconds, I want you to take a guess at me about Yuna's personality. Want to scream? Mm, I really don't think that's going to help this time. You know what? Hmm? It's embarrassing to say this myself, but summoners and their guardians are kind of like Spira's ray of light. A lot of people in Spira depend on us. I learned to practice smiling. Alright, Rack, what do you think this character here, you've heard like 15 seconds of dialogue and voice acting, what do you know about them? I want you, I want you to uh, type, type in the chat and let me know really quickly. We'll hang around for a second. Because I'm going to make a point here of someone who has specifically never played this game and only knows this scene from memes. 
Are those the only keywords that you would like know about them? Would you would would you have taken anything else from that dialogue line? This is just like a p particularly. I know playing the games played again for me. Yep, cool. I'm feeling. Hmm. Mm. I really don't think that's gonna help this time. All right, wait. Here we go. You got pretty good. You sound sad. Yeah, maybe. Want to scream? Mm. I really don't think that's gonna help this time. You know what? Hmm? It's embarrassing to say this myself, but summoners and their guardians are kind of like Spira's ray of light. A lot of people in Spira depend on us. I learned to practice smiling when I'm feeling sad, you know. So we got one minute of dialogue. One minute of dialogue. Android Terra, I want you to tell me your impression of Yuna. Because you said you never played the game before. Any of the games. But they don't continue on from each other. Final Fantasy is a separate thing. So. And then Clyde is a very top tier game design. Titan, I know you're just trolling at this point. And it's very poor, okay? Has, 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 uh, has Mr. Has Prime finished his stream? Oh, he's still going. She's kind of lonely and has a sad past, but positive. Yeah. So basically, like, what I was looking for was she's like a really burden. She's had like this, this, um, this like duty thrust upon her, and it is fucking depressing. She's a pretty depressed person, pretty lonely person, right? She spent a whole life at the fucking temple, um, and has like you know, has, has trouble sort of like dealing with it, right? She's very burdened by the weight of the world, but tries really hard to face it and move forward, right? That's this character arc. Um, and I feel like the lines, like in a minute, like people talk shit on the voice acting for 10. I feel like the character puts that across really well in the way that she delivers the voice. You know, it's kind of quiet. It's kind of meek. Um... <laughs> Add some tap out Brandy got anybody's golden. You know? Like, a lot of people even shit on this scene. This scene is supposed to be awkward, right? This is a really, a point in the story where, like, Titus, so to be clear, so, like, she's, but she's trying to cheer him up. She has a lot of depressing shit going on, but tries to stay positive and doesn't have a breakdown. Exactly. She's trying to make everyone else around her, like, more positive and, and sort of, like, pull through it, right? Even though she's got, like, so much shit going on with her own life, right? You know what's funny is, it's a really accurate summation of most depressed people who, like, you always hear when, like, people, like, say people, like, uh, how can I put this? People, like, will, like, pass away. And they'll say something like, oh, I never knew. I never had any idea. You know? They always seem so cheery. They always seem like, because they'll cover it up and they'll try and do their best for other people. Right? So, like, yeah. We'll watch the rest of the scene. But this is, like, these two have, like, not a thing, but there's something there, basically. And Titus is like, Titus is coming from another world. Everything's so foreign to him. Um, his old man came here, right? And he, he's trying to hunt him down. I know it's hard. Yeah, I understand. Even Titus's voice acting, I don't hate it. Right. Now, let's see what you can do. Huh? Come on. Uh, uh. What she's trying to get people is to, like, you know, scream and laugh and get their emotions out. Next, try laughing out loud. What? Come on, show me. You 
probably shouldn't laugh anymore. <laughs> like, these are people who are, like, in a really tough situation. And, and this dude's in a world he doesn't know anything about, has no idea how to get home. And he's just trying to deal with shit. You know? And that's, that's what's going on here. Why is he a sofa dude wearing overalls? Because he's a fucking... That's his, he's a surface sport guy, okay? He plays a game called Blitzball. They, they swim in a big ball of water and throw the ball at the goal. Okay? That's, that, that's the whole thing. <laughs> now, I love, I love this scene. Like, outside of, like, outside of, like, the, the meaning of it, the emotional meaning of it. I love it as a fucking shit poster. It's so fucking funny. Okay? The actual laughing of the cat, the actors isn't too bad, okay? I feel like this is a very good scene. And this is keeping in mind that, like, this was one of the first games, the first game to be, like, fully voice acted. And I remember playing this, and I never wanted to go back. All I wanted was, like, voice acting in my games. I didn't have to fucking read, like, bullshit long text anymore, right? It was fucking a big deal. And the combat was interesting, and the world was very interesting, was very different, right? Very good style to it. The, um, the concepts were new, and it felt very fresh. Um, yeah, I think it's a very good... I think that's actually an example of good voice acting. Like I mentioned, that first minute tells you everything about Yuna as a character without her having to say much about her actual situation. I feel like it's a good example of voice acting. So, like, people, people use that, like, laughing scene, like the ha, 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 right? They're like, oh, look at how bad the fucking voice acting is. Well, not realizing that it was, like, characters forcing laughter. Yeah. Like, you'd have to, like, even if you didn't, I don't know, like, you'd have to, like, literally cut that, that ha, 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 and, like, not see the con. Yeah, it's clip chimped. It's absolutely clip chimped. So, like, for that reason, I feel like, Final Fantasy is like very, like 10 is like such a landmark title. Um, like 10 was very, very good. I know it's not an example of, but yeah. S tier or unsubbed. I don't know about S tier, right? FF, FF7 is the last one we're watching. Um, FF7 is going to be the last one we do, by the way, because I know that's the one everyone's having it around for. Um, especially after I started off this stream by saying it's overrated. <laughs> do I think it's like S tier? I don't think so. I feel like the characters come up a little bit short. Like, there's not much of an arc to any of the characters. Like, Yuna has a good arc of, like, coming out of her shell and really coming into her own as a summoner and going through those, like, temples and doing the doing the puzzles is really interesting. Those puzzles are super cool. And getting the summons at the end of it feels really good. Right? Um, was, have you never seen Final Fantasy VII, Alfin? Like... But the problems, the problems with the game are huge. There is no world map. There is no groove, like no way to get around. Like the, the, the screens aren't as good. It feels like they were like really honing into style here. Um, I'll shut the fuck up, Titan. You just hate my fucking style because you got none. I've seen you, dude. You fucking noodly ass bitch. But yeah, Final Fantasy X is really good. And a really important title for its time. It has problems, but what it did was really important. The thing is, it's probably not HD. Do we think it's better than Final Fantasy XV? Probably. Do I think it's. Do I think it's worse than 12? Like, it's Titan, okay? Like, this fucking pea brain out here trying to come in here and tell me that, like, 7 isn't, like... It's like, oh, it's the, it's, the, it's the only good Final Fantasy, the only one worth playing. Like, yeah, fuck off. It's probably the only one you have played, okay? 
Anyways, do I think it's worse than 12? Because mm. it's definitely not as good as 9. Like, almost certainly not as good as 9. I feel like it's better than 12. Oh! FF13 did fucking suck ass, and that's why all three of them are sitting in the death tier, dude. You missed out on my fucking 10 minute rant about how bad FF13 was. So we're gonna, there we go. Final Fantasy X is in D tier, but it's low D tier, okay? Low D, high C. 10 2 was interesting. So. Ten two was we're gonna go um F F X two. So like there were two characters in this from ten, right? You had FF three sucked ass. Ah, I see, sorry. Um I think it was interesting that they sort of like started it out by really leaning into like the idol-y culture kind of thing. Or the... It feels very Charlie's Angels. But did anyone... Does anyone... Everyone know he knows Charlie's Angels? What am I talking about? Um... How many people remember 10-2 or even knew that 10-2 was a thing? Because I've met people who didn't even know 10-2 was a thing. I remember this was like such a big deal at the time that a Final Fantasy game was getting a sequel. Because everyone was so used to it being this like one and done world. And it's interesting that like Yuna had this really complete arc in 10. And they've brought it. This was the character they chose to bring to 10 2. But it really, like, it's really interesting that, like, the first thing that they do in this game was have Yuna, like, sort of metaphorically, like, cast off the last game. Right? Like, dress into a much more confident and then, like, sexy outfit compared to, like, the whole, like, trad cover from what she had before. It's not my favorite series, I don't think. That's true. It, it does feel like it's appealing to a very different audience. Riku feels like a character they didn't flesh out very much during 10, which is, it makes sense to bring her back for 10 too, so that you can really like go through it and go through like her past. Is the other person here? Is it just Yuna in the scene? It must be. Because, like, the third one was, like, this fucking sick, implied-to-be-lesbian emo chick um, who was just, like, tough as fucking nails. And she was the best character. The best character. Oh, Pain. Yeah. Wait, let me see. If she does. She does, yeah. What a fucking name, too. Pain. And that's a really good introduction of the character, pretty much. <laughs> Fucking kick a dude in the head to slide down the stairs. Yeah. 
And this song's a bit of a bop, I'm gonna be real. I'm into it. So the whole like game, wait, what was it? 13, yeah, okay. So the whole like game ch revolved around this, this mechanic called dress fears, right? Um, let me have a look. Where basically you'd like, you had like your turn-based combat and you could activate these dress fears, which like changed the character's costumes and change their ability set. So like you leave this area and you have like the idle dress set. So you had these three characters, but they all had like really different things that they could do. And I remember that you ended up like, um, being able to like get fucking dress spheres that were like mechs and shit. It was actually really cool. Like, the, the changes were interesting. It's very clear to me personally that I feel like they were really trying to target, like, a female audience, which is cool. You had, like, a female leads. You had, like, dress fears, right? Um, the, the story was, like, really interesting. Um, the characters were cool, and it was cool to see these three characters just get this, like, hyper-focus on them instead of, like, yeah, the road trip for the girls, true. Um, where it's, like... You have these three people and you're like really hyper focus on their stories instead of like your usual like focus on like the Final Fantasy like seven or eight characters and they all have like a thing that pops up for them along the way. But like here it's like these three and how tight they are and what they mean to each other and and really like just a good vibe, right? Um The mechanics felt interesting, it was super fun. I really like Ten Two. It feels really different to the other Final Fantasies. Um and I remember that it was like a really good way to flesh out like the 10 world because 10 as a world didn't really feel fleshed out by the time you played it. You like visit all these places and you stop by for a couple of minutes like a tourist and then you just sort of go. But like in 10 2, you come back to these places like and see how they are like years later and learn more about the people and learn how they deal with the world, learn what it means to have a world without sin. Um, what that means for that world that's been like building up to, to literally deal with that all th its whole time. Really see like everyone grow as people. See the world grow around them. I really, really liked 10 2. The more I think about it, the more I really liked it. Um, it's really underappreciated. It was very before its time. That's a really good way to put it. Oh, dude, do I want to put this? Is 10 2 a HD? It's definitely the top of D if it's not HD. What do we think? Is it. Is it D or HD? Do we, can we think of many flaws for it? I can't think of many now that I'm thinking, now that I've like sat down and really like thought about the time that I'd spent with the game. I can't think of many, I can't think of many flaws. Oh, I did have a pacing issue. It did drag a bit. That's true. Like you spent like a lot of time in, um, in the Middle Eastern place. Um, yeah. You know what? Fuck it, dude. Let's go. HD. Fucking banger, dude. Actually way better than 10. The more I think about it, the more I like it than 10. Like so much more. It solves a lot of 10's problems. Which is funnily enough the opposite of what... Why did this drag? I must have clicked something. Um, where is the 4K tier? What do you mean 4K? But yeah, I really like 2, 10 too. I really, really do. Um... HD? What do you mean HD? Oh, HD is like high distinction. So like in Australia, if you're at university, you either get like a high distinction and distinction, which is like the 95th percentile. The distinction is like the 90th percentile. Credit is like the top 75, passes top 50% and like fail is anything under 50%. So that's how we do grading in Australia in, in university. Um, so yeah, 10 too, I really like. I think that's everything before we get to the, um, before we get to seven. So I guess it's time to talk about seven now, right? Let's talk about seven. So I didn't come back to play seven until years later. It's not something I played in my childhood. It wasn't something that really like hit me that hard. Um, I know seven was a lot of people's first Final Fantasy. My first interaction with Seven, funnily enough, was the movie. Mm -hmm. 
And they start the fucking trailer out with like one of the biggest things that happens in the game that's such a big deal too. It feels very fallouty, right? The planet weaves a cruel fate for men. Children are always the first to suffer. Geostigma. Genova. Reunion. Children who have lost hope. God, I remember, I remember fucking Tina as a teenager, like Vincent Valentine being like such a, ooh, dark, edgy, cool. And a lot of people like really like aping his style. Respite for the soul. And so he takes sword in hand. Once again. Holy shit, these fight scenes were really well directed, though. It feels very like Monty Ohm, right? That you're right, like um, like a whole movie just being excuse for cool fights, especially the Sephiroth fight at the end. Final Fantasy Seven, Advent. Children. The sad thing is, I don't think anything could live up to that movie in terms of like what you play in the game. <laughs> so you fucking watch like, um, you watch like this, right? You can tell this is very informed by The Matrix, by the way. Like the color scheme, the way that it like cuts. <laughs> I pity you. You just don't get it at all. God, this voice acting is bad, though. There's not a thing I don't cherish. How 
in the fuck could anything match up to that? Because now you go back and you look, Final Fantasy VII uh, playground scene, right? One of the most important scenes of the fucking... Where are we? Um, I want, like, the original. And then you play the game, and it's fucking this. And he's like, hamburglar ass fucking character models. Like, top-down bullshit. I don't know. This is like, this has colored my perspective though, because I went in years later expecting fucking multiple sword slashing, fucking pew, 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 like fucking anime shit. So maybe that colors my perspective, but, okay. And that's why the remake exists. Exactly. I do need to play the remake. I haven't touched it yet. Um, so that being said, I still really like Final Fantasy VII. Um, the stuff I like about the characters are, are very interesting, right? The probably my fa the favorite character that I played. I'm going to make sure I don't get names wrong. Um, where are we? Okay. Setting characters. Cloud Strife. Yeah. So Barrett's probably my favorite character. Um, I really, really like Barrett, and I really like Barrett's arc. Um, though all of them were, like, very interesting. The d designs were different. They were cool. Um, the world is really unique. That whole, like, steampunky vibe. Um, the character interactions are very cool. The growth of all the characters, watching all of their arcs and all of them grow as people that you, like, spend so much time with. It's very interesting. Um, the gameplay is different. The whole, like, sphere system. Um, talking Cat, exactly. Um... The overworld is interesting to, to explore. Everywhere you go is like something different. It feels really fresh. The whole like, especially like getting Cloud to dress up as like a, doing like silly shit all the time with the mini games, getting Cloud to like dress up as a fucking girl was like a really hard impact for the, st the start of the game. Um, it's very good. That's a controversial opinion right there. Final Fantasy VII is very good. Um... Do I think it lives up to the hype? No, I don't. I, li I don't. I really don't think. I think there's a lot that gets in the way of it. I think the graphics get in the way of it early. Um, of being like relatable. Because even then there were like some, th those were like, compared to other games at the time, those were some fucking hamburger glass graphics, right? Um, so even at the time, they were really meh. Th it drags. It drags really fucking hard. The pacing in certain places is terrible. Um, some characters are cool. I like them. I, I like all the characters. Like, they're either, like, cool or, or different enough to be different. The way you could set them up to be, like, anything was very cool. Um... But certain story beats didn't hit me as hard as it hit other people at the time because I didn't play it at the time. I feel like it's very much like a, a part of its time, right? It's one of those things that you come back and watch, like say you watch like go back and watch Escaflone, right? And it's like, oh, this is just, just an isekai, right? Well, it was really interesting for its time. And I feel like Final Fantasy VII suffers a lot for that, that a lot of people rank it so highly because it's in part their first Final Fantasy game. It was their first contact with the series. And it was the first game to move away from that sort of like pixel based like art sort of thing and, and, and really mix up the gameplay and do something different and cool. That now it's like, oh yeah, cool. Like characters die all the time. Like we really push hard on story beats now. Um, there's still stuff that's different and interesting about it compared to other ones. And in comparison to other Final Fantasies, I feel like there are other things that other Final Fantasies do do better. Um... But this, the stuff about it was like, the stuff that was cool about it was very good. And still, it still holds up really well. I went back and played it and I was like, oh, this is a sick game. I can see why people like it. I don't see why people like it as much as they do. 
Um, it really feels like it's overblown. The fact that everyone's like, hey, S tier, fucking double S tier, fucking number one game of all time, Final Fantasy VII, let's go. Like, no, it has its problems. Please acknowledge them. Um, so for me, I would still say it's deserve, deserve and worthy of S tier. Though I think we do need to acknowledge its problems more, and I think it's worse than 8. I think I've given pretty legitimate reasons why I think 8 is better. But there we go. There's my Final Fantasy tier list. So hit that fucking sub button. Hit the like button. Comment down below. There's probably going to be a chuds fucking arguing there. Just give him a bit of a fucking biff, eh? Let's go, champ. Listen to my fucking music here. Uh, Blindside, turn the fucking tide. Let's go.